there's this theme in scripture called coming up short. It's mostly in the minor prophets. And it's this theme where you got this basket and however much you put in it, it just doesn't seem like it has enough. And there's one passage that really captures it best. It's here in Micah. Therefore, I strike you with a grievous blow, making you desolate because of your sins. You shall eat, but not be satisfied. There shall be hunger within you. You shall put away, but not preserve. And whatever you preserve, I will give to the sword. You shall sow, but not reap. You shall tread olives, but not anoint yourselves with oil. You shall tread grapes, but not drink wine. Coming up short is not just a message about who God is, but it's also a message of our relationship to him. When Israel had their covenant in the desert with God, he had a way of measuring their faithfulness by the amount of rain and the amount of abundance of crops that they had. Could you imagine if our faith was barometered according to the weather patterns that we had, according to the abundance of crops that we had? Coming up short is definitely a barometric teaching because when the pressure goes up, then you'd start listening to day and age. If you ask somebody, what are you short on? They'd say short on money, short on time. Because everybody's short on time. It's running around and everything's crazy. And I don't have time to spend time with my family. I don't have time to do anything but go work. Because why? We need money. We trade our time for money. And we work, 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 work. And get more money, more money, more money. And, and that's the way our society and our culture is driven. But do you ever have enough? That's the measurement of coming up short. If you work and work and work and you just don't have enough, the trust in the God of this world, which is money, has begun to show that you'll come up short if that's what you're trusting in. The people who need this message the most are going to be the people who are least likely to listen. Just like when Jesus was ministering, he said, he who has ears, let him hear. He who has eyes, let him see. They were listening, but they really didn't hear. They were looking, but they really didn't see. And it's the same way with coming up short. You know, a lot of these things match with Maslow's pyramid of needs. And some of the basic needs are some of the things that were connected to people's faith and following God. From the very first time that they entered the desert, the Lord made it clear that as you obey, as you love me, you will live in abundance. And this is not only for you, but it's a heritage for your children. In Joel chapter 2, we, we have the introduction to grain, wine, and oil as measurements of abundance. Grain is for bread, wine is for drink, and oil is for bread and, and anointing. And all these things will be in abundance when things are good, when the rain is there. When the righteous rain has fallen, then the grain, the wine, and the oil will be there. There's a whole list of things that can come up short. Even as we work our way up the Maslow Pyramid, nutrition is going to come up short. And not just nutrition, but feeling of being filled. Safety. If God is your protector, then you don't have to worry. When Israel rejected God as their king, they took on other leadership. Their leaderships became earthly kings, and they were never going to be good enough. They were never going to equal the, the leadership that God had for them. In Joel chapter 2, the light was coming up short. Their days were dark and gloomy and cloudy. Joel chapter 2.10 talks about quaking and shaking. And when God is not your stability, then a quake can be frightening. A quake can be earth shaking. But only in God, only if God is your trust and your strength, will you be secure when there is instability. Because if, if God is your God, then you will always be stable. Pause. Paul the Apostle was the one that wrote, evil companionships corrupt good morals. And it's, it's even true in the Old Testament. If you're coming up short, your allies are going to be coming up short. People who stand beside you and behind you in battle, they're, they're going to fail you. Another thing that could come up short is your health. Disease and sickness will take over 
from a measurement of health. The word of the Lord through prophets and preaching will have no answer from God, Micah 3 says. So when you're coming up short on faithfulness, then you're coming up short on listening to God. The story of your spiritual past is not going to be able to save you from the present or the future. These things kind of have a balance because the things that you'll lose if you're not under the protection of God are the same things that you need to count on God in times when you are faithful. When you're faithful to God, He is your rock. He is your security. He is your providence. He is your protection. He is your sustenance. He is the one who gives. He, he is, he's your leader. He's your guide. But there will be some who say, coming up short's not really my problem. And in the days when Josiah was rising up to be king, they had lost the word of God. It had gone missing because the, the priests weren't doing what they should be doing. The kings weren't doing what they should be doing by constantly referring to God's guidance, keeping his festivals, keeping his commandments. And so this word had gone missing for quite some time. And you know what? Nobody even missed it because it wasn't part of their life anymore. When something's been missing for so long in our lives, there's not going to be a felt need. You're not going to feel like you missed the, the thing that's gone. Uh, the USA has been blessed so much with, with the abundance. And sometimes I think that we wouldn't even recognize if, if things started coming up short because in a, in a worldwide scale, we still have abundance, even if times are lean. And... And so it's a, it's a huge warning for us to walk in God's ways, to repent of the things that have taken us away from a relationship with Him. Turn your ways, dedicate, dedicate your wealth, dedicate your time, the things that are so precious in our day and age, the things that are gods of our age. Dedicate them, turn them back to God Himself, and He will bless you. And you will find that you're not coming up short. You will find that your needs will be at hand. And then if the word of God goes missing, you will truly miss it. And you will long to hear a word from the, from the Lord. You know, there's something about this coming up short that is the total opposite of, of your prosperity gospel type messages. It says in Micah, it says... Do not preach, thus they preach. One should not preach of such things. Disgrace will not overtake us. Then in verse 11 it says, If a man should go about and utter wind and lies, saying, I will preach to you of wine and strong drink, he would be the preacher for these people. There's always been people who have misrepresented what God wanted to have said. But God has a message for the people who are false prophets. He says, Thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who lead my people astray, who cry peace when they have something to eat, but declare war against him who puts nothing into their mouths. Therefore it shall be night to you without vision and darkness to you without divination. The sun shall go down on the prophets and the day shall be black over them. The seers shall be disgraced and the diviners put to shame. They shall all cover their lips for there is no answer from God. But as for me, I am filled with power, with the Spirit of the Lord, and with the justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. The message of a true heart that has come to repentance in him is, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And this is a, a heart that longs for God to be in control. There is good news upon return to God. The message is repent. Repent is not going to get people coming back to your church on Sundays, but it is the message of the heart that longs for God. Habakkuk 3.17-19 through 19 says, Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, 
The produce of the olive fail, and the yields yield no food. The flock will be cut off from the fold, and there are no herds in the stall. The, the big word is yet. You're coming up short, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. Joel 2.19 is the return of oil, grain, and wine. So when things are taken away, there is a giving back of the abundance that comes from the righteous reign of, of God. The rain returns. Emmanuel returns. The God with us, his presence, his very presence returns to us. Rescue and redemption is yours again upon turning back to the Lord. Peace is back again. We're going to look at three passages in the New Testament. They seem to mean so much more having looked at the, the opposite of abundance. The, you know, God sent Jesus to give us an abundant life that we might not be filled with wine, grain, and oil necessarily, but that we might be filled with Jesus himself. Christ himself, when he was preaching the Sermon on the Mount, said, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds. To the one who knocks it will be opened. For which of one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent. If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So that's the sentiment behind John chapter 14, 15, where he said, anything that you ask in my name, I will do it. And in 15, I, I like the way Christ brings us back to a, the metaphor of the garden. I am the vine. The father is the husbandman. And if you abide in the vine, then you will bear much fruit and your joy may be filled. You'll be full of joy, just like the grapes are full of juice. Uh, we'll be full of joy if, we're, if we are abiding in Christ, if we are full with Jesus himself. And lastly, in James chapter 4, where do these fights come from among you? You desire, but you don't have. You murder. You covet and cannot obtain. You fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. And you ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions, you adulterous people. So here again, we have a whole turnaround. It all comes back to, to what does God really want for his people? What kind of abundance does he seek for, for me and you? He seeks the abundance for us to be filled in Christ, for us to have what we ask for, for us to be neighborly and sharing what we have with others, for us not to be leaning upon the world for our sustenance, not to be leaning upon money and salaries and time for getting our payday, that, that God is sufficient to provide for our needs. Father, thank you for the abundance that you've given us in Jesus Christ, and we pray that we can abide in him so that we will never come up short and we will always be abundantly filled. Amen.